Ladies and gentlemen, come on in. We are starting. We're going to be jumping right into it. Let me just add it to my Facebook page. I know I said I wasn't going to be streaming on Facebook in 2024, but some lady said, I don't use YouTube, so I'll miss you. And I, I got sad and I decided that I'm going to be streaming to Facebook still. So hopefully we are live on Facebook right now. Let me know where you guys are watching from in the chat. There we go. For whatever reason, it keeps locking my Facebook. There we go. We're live. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the broadcast. Tonight's going to be an amazing night. We're on episode 165 of our Monday Night Fire, our Monday Night Teachings. A couple quick announcements. Tomorrow we have Bill Wees on the podcast. We are answering your questions on hell. Last time I had him on, I had a million questions I didn't get to ask him. So I'm going to ask him all those. He's going to briefly share his testimony, and it's going to be an amazing time. Look on Instagram for a question story. If you want to ask questions, it'll be on Instagram tomorrow morning, February 28th. That's this Sunday. I will be at the Way World Outreach in San Bernardino. If you're in Southern California, I'm going to be there this Sunday. So go to my website, isaiahsaldivar.com slash schedule. Meet me out in San Bernardino. Um, February 24th, I'll be in Antioch, California. March 3rd, I'll be at Lifesong in Stockton, California, my home church. And July 19th through the 21st, I'll be in Washington at the Revival in the Desert. I was trying to get the name right. You can go to revivalinthedesert.com to find out for tickets and all that stuff. It's going to be an amazing time. You don't want to miss it. And as always, we are live Monday at 6, Tuesday at 6, and then Thursday at noon. That is our new stream time. We had like 1,300 people last Thursday, which was amazing. So Thursday at noon is our new live time for the year. And then 1.30 p.m. starting this week and going forward for the whole year, 1.30 p.m. is our partner's prayer meeting. So if you are a monthly partner, you should have got an email today. If you didn't get the email, check your spam box. If it wasn't in your spam box, go to YouTube if you're a member and go to the community tab and look at the YouTube member only post. That will have all the info. It will be the same meeting ID all year long. So that's going to help us out or that's going to help you out if you want to join that 1.30 p.m. call. Okay, if you say, Isaiah, it wasn't on the community page. I go through your website. I didn't get an email. Go last resort. Go to my Facebook or my Instagram and comment on my post that you'll see there about monthly partners and say you didn't get the link and then I'll send it to you manually, okay? I'll announce that more as the days go on. I'll announce it more again tomorrow. Again, let me know where you guys are watching from in the chat. That's going to help us out. And we're going to jump into it. I have a meeting tonight in about an hour and a half. So we're going to go for it here. That's why I had to go an hour early. I know people didn't know and a bunch of people are going to show up at six and we're going to already be almost done. But it is what it is. You guys are here. They can watch on the replay. Thank you guys for being here again. Do all the stuff I said. If you want to be in the weekly prayer meetings, you should have got an email. Check the Facebook community page. And if not, message me on, uh, go to my Instagram or Facebook and comment down below. You didn't get the post. And then I'll send you that manually. I don't know why it is so hot right now in my studio. It's like 80 something degrees. I'm trying to look at what's going on. My window's open. It's cold outside. Who knows what's going on, but I'm going to be sweating here. We're going to be going for it. Tonight we are going to go into, that's not bad, three minute intro. We're going to be going into spiritual warfare training. I believe in these last days, we have to be trained. We have to be equipped spiritually. So listen, if you're in this broadcast tonight or you're watching the replay and you go, I don't want to talk about spiritual warfare. I don't want to be trained. I'm not trying to be a part of the army. Then guys, please don't come in the comments crying about how I'm teaching about deliverance again or warfare again or training again. Just go watch a different video. We have 1800 videos. I'm not going to cater to those that are like, I don't like spiritual warfare training. Then this is not the stream for you. Okay, I have plenty of other videos on the channel. I really feel like God wants me to train the church, equip the church, and very few people are talking about this stuff. So I'm going to talk about stuff very few people are talking about. If you don't like it, I don't know what to tell you. You're an adult. You can see, you know, go find another video to watch. There's plenty of videos out there that aren't about this. This is probably one of the few videos you're going to find about what I'm going to talk about. But we are talking about doors that demons enter through. Here's the devil's greatest lie and what he's keep t he keeps telling the church. His greatest lie is that he's not real. His greatest lie is that he's not active. He's not working. He's not lurking. He's not attacking. He's kind of just not involved in our life at all. And that's, that's his greatest lie. It's how he's able to use camouflage to overthrow us. I don't want to be a victim. I want to be a victor. I don't want to live my life under the power of the enemy, ignorant of spiritual warfare, not realizing I'm in a spiritual battle. Write that in your notes, underline it, highlight it, circle it, put a check mark next to it, put a cross by it, whatever you have to do. I am in a spiritual battle. Every single day, there is a battle going on in the spiritual realm. I am a part of that battle. I'm not going to be ignorant. It's time for you to get your head out of the sand. 
I know you might not like this type of teaching, but you need this type of teaching, especially in these end times. Guys, we are in the last days. Do I need to tell you all the signs of the last days? Do I need to go through the book of Revelation again for three, four months like I did before? Playlist on the channel. We're in the last days. You're a soldier of God. So how are you going to oppose or fight something you don't even believe exists? You don't even acknowledge. Guys, there's not one scripture in the Bible where Jesus even hints that we shouldn't talk about destroying the devil's works. There's not one scripture in the Bible where Jesus says, don't talk about destroying the enemy. Don't talk about deliverance. Don't focus on the devil. Don't focus on what he's doing in the earth. No, Jesus constantly overthrew his kingdom, was constantly driving out devils. There's no verse that says, don't talk about the enemy strategies. We are ignorant when it comes to the devil strategies. Too many of you are like, we just need to focus on Jesus, brother, and not on spiritual warfare, not on deliverance. It is impossible to focus on casting out demons and not focus on Jesus. And it is impossible to truly focus on the ministry of Jesus and not talk about casting out demons. Why? Because it's something he did everywhere. It's something he demonstrated everywhere he went. So if I'm Christ's ambassador, then I should be demonstrating his kingdom on the earth. So we know that right now as I'm speaking, the devil is lurking. The devil is prowling. The devil is searching, looking for someone to devour. Is the devil defeated? Yes. Christ defeated him on the cross. Does he still have power though? Yes. The Bible says we are fighting the powers of darkness. So we do a major disservice when we create unbiblical theology that says the devil and his demons don't exist. He doesn't war against us. He's not active and he's on a beach somewhere on vacation. That doesn't help anybody. That could not be farther from the truth. The truth is he's active on the earth. He's working day and night accusing you. He's not in hell, by the way. We all know this. Well, I hope if you follow my ministry, you know this. The devil's not in hell. That's not his address. It's his final location, his final destination. He will be cast into hell, but hell is not where he resides right now. The Bible calls him the prince of the power of the air. And it's not okay that Satanists, witches, warlocks have a higher level of conviction, warfare mentality, dedication, commitment, separation to their God than the church does. Why are they involved in warfare, attacking, fighting, engaging spiritually? I'm tired of ex-witches coming and getting saved and saying, I used to do witchcraft for eight hours a day. I used to pray for 10 hours a day. I used to astral project for six hours a day. Why are they so serious? And the church is so complacent and casual. If you are casual, you will be a casualty. You will live your life as a casualty of war, as a prisoner of war. So tighten up your bootstraps. Don't be a crybaby, be a warrior. The devil's fighting, the devil's warring, and we need some soldiers. Why keep talking about this? We need some soldiers out here. We need help. Come on, chat. We need help, guys. We are fighting this battle, and it feels like there's only a few of us. There's a remnant. We're like the weird ones. Oh, you guys cast out demons. You guys fight spiritual warfare. You guys are weird. Uh, or we're just good soldiers. Like Paul said, being a good soldier, don't get entangled with civilian affairs. Don't get tied up in the plans of the enemy. So guys, we have to stop crying about, I don't like this type of teaching. It's uh, focus on the cross. I just did a whole teaching on the blood of Jesus. Where were you at? Where were you? Why do you only come in when we teach spiritual warfare, but you're not there when we talk about the blood. You're not there when we're preaching about holiness. You're not there when we're talking about God's plan for people's lives. We got to get trained and equipped. It's time for the warriors to rise up. Is there anybody in the chat that's like, amen, brother. Finally, somebody says it. I'm tired of living my life as a punching bag for the devil. I've been given power and authority over him. Is he defeated? Christ defeated him on the cross. But he's still, he's still ruling to a capacity on the earth. So we still fight him. Look at 1 Peter 5, 8 says, I got a lot to cover tonight and I don't have a lot of time. It says, be sober, sober or self-controlled. Be vigilant. That means watchful. Because your adversary, so we have an enemy, an adversary, someone fighting us. The devil walks around like a lion, seeking someone that he might devour. So Paul is telling us to be sober, to be vigilant. Why? Because there is a real devil and he's prowling. He's walking around. Where is he walking? Is he walking around hell? No. Is he just walking around in the sky? No. Paul says, to Pe Peter says, sorry, not Paul, Peter, be sober, be vigilant, be self-controlled, be watchful. 
Why? Because the devil's looking for someone to destroy, looking for someone to shipwreck, searching for an open door, searching for a crack in your armor, searching for a place to pounce on you right in front of that door. And tonight, that's what we're talking about is the doors that we open to the enemy. It's time to shut every door in Jesus name. I'm shutting every door tonight. So what do we need to do? Sober up, be self-controlled. Don't let things control you. Don't let anger control you. Don't let bitterness control you. Don't let, hello, the news media control you. Don't let lust control you. Don't let, let rage or religion control you. Be self-controlled. That's what it means to be sober. It literally means to be self-controlled. It's, it's to stop letting other things be the driving force in your life. So many times we make decisions based on the lust of the flesh, the desires of our eyes. Wherever my flesh wants to go, I go. Wherever my carnal nature wants to go, I go. I'm being controlled by my own carnal flesh or I'm being controlled by an unclean spirit. Now, we're not tonight talking about the flesh. We talked about that a couple weeks ago. We did a whole video on that. We're talking about demons. So don't be like, oh, what about the flesh, brother? Praise the Lord. We can talk about the flesh. We do that all the time. But that's not what we're talking about tonight. Just for all those negative Nancys in the chat. Sorry if your name's Nancy. We're talking about demonic spirits that try to control us. So we need to be self-controlled, not demon-controlled. Be self-controlled. Be controlled by the Holy Spirit. Let the devil know you're no longer in control. I'm tired of letting demons control my life. I'm tired of letting demons control my thought life. The Bible says, so a man thinks, so he is. Demons will use thoughts, give us thoughts, to shape and mold us into the person Satan wants us to be. So the de God's not the only one that has a plan for your life. The devil has a plan for your life. The devil wants to destroy you. His demons want to destroy you. They, they want to completely ruin everything going on in your life. Every career path, financial plan, job, family member, relationship, relationship with God, relationship with your kids, they're looking to destroy it in one way or another. They want to drive you. They want to be in the driver's seat. Now, interesting, Peter says, be sober, which is a term referring to not being drunk. When you're drunk, how many know when you're drunk driving, you're no longer the one driving? The alcohol takes the driver's seat. So he says, be sober, take the driver's seat. Don't let something else drive your life. Don't let something else motivate you. We have gotten drunk on so many things, drunk on people's opinions, drunk on addiction. Anything that controls you, you're drunk on. Pleasure, distractions, idols, money. Some of you are drunk on money. You don't only have to be drunk on alcohol. You can be drunk on many other things. Don't be drunk on these things. Don't let them drive you. So don't just be sober, but be watchful. This is what we're doing tonight. We're watching. We're seeing where the enemy gets in and we're watching to make sure he doesn't get in. We're watching doors to make sure that they are closed. Be watchful. Don't live your life ignorant or an accident. Look out for the strategies. Look at the areas he's trying to sneak in. Be vigilant. He's always trying to find a way in. So I don't just, I'm not just vigilant last year or the year before or sometime in my life. I'm always making sure he's not coming through doors. I know he wants into my life. The devil wants in. Demons, and when I, when I say the devil, I mean his demons. Demons are trying to get into your body. They're tr Am I loud enough tonight? They're trying to get into your life. They come through open doors. So we want to slam those doors shut and make sure they're not getting in. I'm going to talk about seven common ways they get in. Some are outside of your control. Some are inside of your control. It's very important that we're watchful, we're alert, we're sober, we're steadfast. The Bible says resist the devil. Resist him. Be steadfast against him. Take action against him. Withstand him. Fight against him. Come on, chat. Put on the, am I preaching to anybody tonight? Am I the only one? Put on the armor of God. Put on the armor of God. Don't tell Peter, James, Paul, oh, well, I live in American Christianity. And the, they say the devil has no power. American Christianity says the devil's not active. Let's just ignore him. Good luck with that. How's that been working for you, this whole just ignore the devil, don't fight, don't go to battle? How's that been working? How's the bondage been going? You could, you could say all you want that you don't have chains on, but why is it such a struggle to lift your hands? Why is it such a struggle to pray? Why is it such a struggle to get ahead in life? Why is it such a struggle to break that sexual addiction, that sexual sin, that alcohol addiction, that vape addiction, that nicotine addiction, that cussing addiction, that desire to blaspheme God, to be a hater, to be racist, to be angry? You could ignore him. Oh, I don't believe he's real. Okay, cool. How's that working for you? Or you can be a victor. You can recognize it and not just get yourself free, get free, but get other people free. 
get other people free. I don't just want to be free. I want to get other people free. Hebrews 7.25 says he is able, this is Christ, once and forever to save those who come to God through him. He lives forever to intercede with God on their behalf. Think about that. That's Hebrews 7.25. Write that down in your Bible. Romans 8.34. It is Christ who died and furthermore also risen, who is at the right hand of God, who makes intercession for us. That's Romans 8.34. Those two verses tell us Christ is praying for you. Christ is on your team. He's on your corner. He's your coworker. He's part of the Great Commission with you. We have Christ on our side. Who's praying for you? Christ, making intercession for you. You're not weak and defeated and lame. You have Christ praying for you. Is there a battle? Yes. Is there a war? Yes. Is there casualties? Yes. But the one who is in us is greater than the one that we are warring against. Jesus, who has already defeated the enemy, is now praying for us in our fight. Remember, guys, Christ defeated the devil, but it doesn't mean you've defeated the enemy. Because there's still enemies in our life. There's still demons in our life that we have to overcome and get free from and fight off. And, and it's not just, guys, oh, help me, Lord, tonight. Help me. It's not just getting delivered one time. I'm fighting things off. I'm in an active battle. So I didn't just get delivered in 2011 or 2014 or 2018. I'm delivered, praise the Lord. Now I'm fighting things off. There's intruders trying to get in. There's things looking for an open door. So I'm warring against those things. So I'm vigilant. I'm sober. I'm not sleeping. I'm vigilant. I'm awake. Okay, make sure that doesn't get in. Make sure I'm not on that website late at night. Make sure I'm not texting this person Make sure or messaging this person on Instagram. Make sure I'm not going to that profile page. Make sure I'm not talking the way I shouldn't be talking. Make sure I'm not hanging around the wrong people. Make sure I'm making sure I'm being vigilant. Oh, I know the, de oh, the devil's going to try to get in through there. Seems like an innocent relationship, but I don't want to give the devil an opportunity. He's an opportunist. And when I say the devil, I mean his demons. He's looking for an open door. So we have to make sure that we have control. Look at what Proverbs 25, 28 says. And I'm going to give you the seven ways the demons enter in commonly. Look what it says in Proverbs 25, 28. A man without self-control is like a city broken into that is left without walls. Interesting, because remember, Peter says self-control is the key to overcoming Satan. And now Solomon's saying a man that has no self-control is like a city that has no walls. Anything can enter into that city. It's left defensive, defenseless. The doors are open. The gates are open. It's pillage. It can now, it can now, it can no longer defend itself. So it relates a man. Look at this. It relates a man to a city. It's saying a man is like a city in that when you have no self-control, the walls are down. And what can get in? Intruders, demons. When we put our defensive down, demons come in. When we drop our guard, demons come in. When we let various things take control of our spiritual house, demons come in. Leaving the doors open, leaving the windows unlocked leaving things. I'm checking every lock tonight. I'm looking through every window, looking at every window's closed. When I go to bed at night, I check my doors. I set my alarm system on. I set my locks up. I make sure all the doors are latched. Why? Because I don't want no intruders coming in at night. So why don't I treat my body that way? Because Matthew 12, I'm about to show you, says our body is a house that demons try to live in. Have you locked the doors? Have you shut the windows? That's what we're doing tonight. Where are they getting in? How does the devil, devil keep getting into my life? How does he keep getting in? Verse again, it's Proverbs 25, 28. Ephesians 2, 2 says, you used to live in sin, just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil. Let me say it again, Ephesians 2, 2. You, need, you used to live in sin, just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is a spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. So what does the, the world do? What does the rest of the world do? They obey the devil. That's what, that's what Paul's saying. Guys, are, are, we, are you awake tonight? Are you reading the same Bible as me? Paul says the whole world obeys the devil. And what, what is the devil? And then Paul goes on to tell us the commander of the powers in the unseen world. Man, I really wish the church would wake up, guys. My heart is broken for a sleeping church that doesn't realize there's a war going on. I look across the pews at thousands of people in bondage and a pastor who's supposed to be the watchman and the shepherd allowing the wolf in and not saying a word about it. Where are our pastors that are going to fight? Where are pastors that don't care about the criticism and the stigma? Do you care that people criticize you and you're a weirdo for teaching deliverance? No, I don't care because I'd rather see people get set free than have a nice reputation. Criticize me. Talk bad about me. 
Don't invite me to your conference. Oh, no, I missed out on your lukewarm conference. What am I going to do? I missed out on the conference again. I'm not followed by all the cool pastors. Oh, no, eh, go cry. I'll go cry on the pickleball court while I'm playing pickleball. I don't care. Call me crazy. I'll be the outcast if it means people get set free. If being an outcast means one person gets set free, I don't care. So, yeah, you're going to be labeled crazy. The world obeys the devil, the commander of the powers of the unseen world. The devil has a throne, according to Revelation 2.13. The devil has a kingdom, according to Matthew 12.26. Someone commented on my post yesterday. This is clickbait, brother. The devil doesn't have a kingdom because my video was about the guy who died and then God showed him Satan's kingdom. That, and the guy said, this is clickbait, brother. The devil has no kingdom. He's in hell. Uh, I literally had to show the guy the verse on the comments. Matthew 12, Jesus says Satan has a kingdom. So I don't know what religious pipe you're smoking, but Satan does have a kingdom. He has a throne according to Revelation chapter 2. Matthew 9.34 says he's the prince of all the demons. So we fight the demons, but Satan is the commanding officer over all those demons. Is this helping anybody? Let me know. His power is temporary and his power is limited. Look at what Romans 16.20 says. For the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. Oh man, I love that verse. Woo, that's a good verse. I love that. Look at this. Romans 16.20. I got to say it again. I felt that in my spirit. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. I love that. John 12, 31. Now is the judgment of the world. Now the ruler of the world will be cast out. This is Satan, the ruler of this world. Right now, if you didn't look at the celebrities that are being promoted, go look at all the ones winning the Grammys. Look at all the ones that are winning awards. They're all satanic. All of them are satanic. Why? Because the devil's the ruler of this world. Get out of denial. Denial isn't just a river in Egypt. You'll catch that later. Get out of denial. The devil's ruling this world. So I could just sit back and cry about it. Oh, the devil, look at the music. Look at the new celebrity. Or I could fight. Or I can cast him out of my friends and family. Or I can cast him out of my friends and family. Coworkers. People at my church. I, I'm going to cast him out. I'm not going to cry about him. Why? Because I'm a warrior. I'm armed and dangerous. And my weapons are not carnal, but mighty through God for the pulling down the strongholds. Jesus gives us a fundamental, fundamental principle right here in Matthew 12 and in Luke 11. Luke 11 says this, when an evil spirit, Luke 11, 24, I just want to touch on one thing and then I'm going into the seven reasons because I, I got to go quick here. Luke 11, 24, when an evil spirit leaves a person, look at this, it goes in the desert searching for rest. So it leaves a person, a body, and it looks for rest. But when it finds none, it says... Luke eleven twenty four. the demon says, I will return to the house I left. Now, I want you to note, this is Jesus speaking here. This is not Paul, which Paul is great. Peter is great. John is great. This is Jesus. The words are read. Jesus is telling us that the demon says, I'll return to the house that I left. So the demon returns and finds its former house. What, what is the house? A person. I'm a house. When an evil spirit leaves a person, it goes and says, I'll return to my house. I'm the house. Demons are looking to live in people. Demons hate being without a body. They need a body to sin through. They love bodies. They want to live in you. That's where demons live, inside of people. Okay? So when it returns to its house, it finds its former house is swept in an order. And the spirit finds seven other spirits that are more wicked than itself. And they all enter the person and live there. So the person's the house. Do you see the parallel language? Jesus goes, there's a person, then there's a house, and there's a person. You're like, what is all this talk? You're the house. Our bodies are spiritual houses. Okay, so the demon now has seven of its friends more wicked than itself. They all enter that person. They all enter that person and live there. And so the person is worse off than before. But notice he says the demon leaves. It doesn't say the demon gets cast out. So there must have been open doors. There must have been unlocked doors do houses have doors? I'm, I'm reading the chat. If you don't know what I'm reading, I'm reading the chat, guys. Let me know. Do houses have doors? Yes. Do houses have windows? Yes. Okay, so if I have an open door in my house, in my life, a demon's able to get in. A demon's able to get through. There's an open door. The demon says, I'll return to my house. Why? Because the, the door is open. The house is empty. We need to be full of the Holy Spirit, the power of God. We need to not leave our lives empty. We need to fill our life up with the gifts of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, the power of the Spirit. A lot of us are closing doors, but we're not locking them. 
We're not being careful with what we listen to. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. Windows, doors, windows, doors, windows, doors, my eyes, my ears, my ear gates, my eye gates, my mouth gate, what's coming in, what's coming out. Remember, it's not what goes in, it's what goes out that defiles you. So you need to be careful what you're listening to, what you're watching. I know what demons are trying to do. I know my weaknesses. I know what doors easily get unlocked for me. I know what I could easily go back to. I'm not unlocking those doors anymore. I, I locked, guys. Are you guys catching what I'm cooking tonight? I'm un, I'm, I've locked, I've locked the door of pornography 13 years ago. I locked the door of lust. I locked the door of addiction. I locked the door of alcohol. I locked the door of perversion. I locked the door of bitterness and anger. What doors have you locked? I'm not unlocking those doors. They've been locked for 13 years. And those spirits that hide behind those doors, waiting to get through, I'm not letting them in. Because I know that sin is crouching at my door. I'm going to show you that in scripture tonight. I know the devil's waiting to get in. So I'm not unlocking those doors. Luke 10 says the devil tries to find another way to get in. He doesn't go through the main door. He looks for another way. The thief and the robber climbs in another way. Climbs in. So he's looking for another way to get in. He's looking for another way. Genesis chapter... Gen, la, 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 tongue twister. Genesis chapter 4 verse 7. You'll be accepted if you do what is right. But if you refuse to do what is right, then watch out. Sin is crouching at your door. Here we have doors again. It wants to control you. But you must subdue it and be its master. So we know sin, not only demons are crouching, sin is crouching at the door. Sin wants to get through that door. So there's a connection with us being houses. Even in Genesis, the Bible speaks of us as we are houses and the devil's trying to get in. Look what Ephesians 4.27 says. And give no opportunity to the devil. The devil's looking to pounce on you. Ladies and gentlemen, he's trying to get in. Are you letting him in? Are you easy for the enemy or are you going to fight? Stop crying. Stop crying about it and fight the devil. Stop, oh, another spiritual warfare training. You need it. If I did, let me, let me just say this, okay? And I'm just, whatever. It is what it is. I don't even care. It's my channel. My name's on the channel. I can say what I want. If I did a, a spiritual warfare training for all of 2024, every single Monday night, it still wouldn't be enough. The church is so low on this. They're so below the standard. It's so rarely talked about. I had a guy tell me 40 years I've been in church. I've never heard about spiritual warfare, or fighting the devil or casting demons. None of it. What have we been teaching people? You're a soldier. You're a soldier in God's army. We need more training. Don't give the devil an opportunity. Now, a lot of you are going to hear these open doors and say, well, brother, that's not fair. I want you to remove fair from your vocabulary tonight. The devil doesn't play fair. The devil doesn't know what fair is. It's not in his dictionary. So this whole thing, that isn't fair. It doesn't have to be fair. There's nothing fair about the way the devil works. The devil's not sitting there going like, oh man, I can't kill that baby because that wouldn't be fair. I can't ruin that person's marriage through trauma because that wouldn't be fair. I can't give that person a spiritual spouse, a demon thinking it's married to them because that wouldn't be fair. The devil doesn't care about fair. He comes as an angel of light according to 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen. He's looking to get in. A thief doesn't play fair. The, the thief doesn't come at night and say, knock, knock. I just want you to know I'm about to break in. I just want to make sure it's fair. I want to be all in the same playing field. They don't play by the rules. He's a liar, a loser, a thief. He doesn't play by the rules. So get out of your head that the devil's going to play fair. Look what 1 Corinthians 11.3 says. I'm afraid that even as a serpent deceived Eve, Eve by his cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere, pure devotion to Christ. So Paul is telling the church in Corinth, in the same way that Satan deceived Eve, I'm worried that you're going to be deceived. I'm worried that deception is going to come in. I don't want the devil to deceive you. So we got to make sure the doors are closed. Now, when demons enter into a human body, sometimes people feel it. Sometimes people don't, okay? You don't have to feel it. Some people feel a physical thing. They'll say, I felt something enter into me. Now, there were moments in my life, a few moments, I won't go into detail on because my mom's watching. No, I'm just kidding, but my mom is watching. But there were moments before I was saved as a teenager, I felt a presence. I felt something happen to me. I felt something change. So sometimes when a demon enters through a hum into a human body, you will have a physical reaction. You'll feel a weight. You'll feel a darkness. 
you'll feel something enter into you. But it's not always the case. Some people don't feel anything. Some people don't feel a presence. Some people don't feel a demon enter into them. But I want you to note this thing. This is very important as we go into door number one. And this is not like, what's behind door number one? This is not the price is right, but there's demons behind doors. Okay? I had to throw in a joke. A spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. This is very important. I want you to write this in your notes tonight. And I hope you're taking notes because how many of you know good disciples take notes? The New Testament was the notes the disciples were taking uh, about what Jesus was doing. All right? That's not going to go into that. Here's what you got to realize. Demons cannot enter by force. Write that down. Demons cannot push doors open. You must open a door or somebody else must open a door by doing something to you. But the door has to be open. So for example, if a demon can just jump on it and enter somebody, I would have a million demons because I have a big YouTube channel. We reached hundreds of millions of people last year. I was trending on witch talk on TikTok. Uh, those thousands of witches putting hexes on me at one time and all of that, okay? Doesn't matter. The demon can't enter into me unless I open the door. It can't jump on me. It can't force itself into me. So every time a demon's there, it's there because of a reason. Every demon that's in your life right now, if they're there, are there because of a reason. If you didn't watch my video last month about signs you have a demon, go watch that on my live tab. But this is how demons enter in. So they can't enter by force. There has to be a legal right or le legal permission for them to come in. And it's important to note that a gate or a door serves two main purposes. Are you ready? It keeps stuff in and it keeps stuff out. That's the purpose of a gate or a door. So I'm not only keeping things in, I'm keeping things out by gates and by doors. So you have to make sure that you're keeping the gates closed so nothing comes back in. Let's go into, now I want you to know I'm also going to be giving you stuff on my experience. Okay, doing deliverance for 13 years now. Casted out demons of thousands of people, done mass deliverances with five, six, seven, eight thousand people. Literally prayed for hundreds of thousands of people online. I've prayed for millions of people to get delivered and all of that. Okay, so I'm not just saying based on a story I read or a book I read. I'm also going to go off of experiences I've had doing deliverance, seeing where demons originated from. Now, I could give you a list of 50 things tonight, but I'm not going to. I'm going to give you seven because 50 is too many and we don't have time, but maybe we'll do a part two. Number one, common open door is the family door. Family doors. A lot of people get demons. Demons come in through their family. Abuse growing up. Countless people I've done deliverance on got demons from being abused as a child, being abused as a teenager. Demons don't always, write this down, demons don't always come from what you did, but often they come from what was done to you. Demons don't always come from what you did, but often from what was done to you. So physical abuse. I told you guys the story before. I dealt with a pastor's wife who had a demon and the demon said I came in when she was eight years old. Her mom punched her in the face and the moment her mom punched her in the face, that's when I came into her. And she validated that story after her deliverance. She had a demon of rage and anger from being punched in the face by her mom when she was eight years old. That abuse was a legal right, an open door of trauma, which is gonna be our next one, to go into her. So family abuse, Sexual abuse in the family is a huge open door. And again, some of this stuff will not be appropriate for kids. And I'm sorry, guys. Lately, I've been doing a lot of edgy um, content that's not appropriate for kids, but I, I can't sugarcoat the training. And so I will have some more kid content soon or some more teachings that are more suitable for children. I apologize for that. I, de I definitely am aware that a lot of my content is like 18 plus. I'm aware of that. I'm not ignorant to that. Um, I'm aware of it, but it's what God's having me do right now. And so there will be a time where I'm doing more kid appropriate content. There is a lot of kid appropriate content on my teachings, but like this type of stuff, obviously, um, is probably not appropriate for, for young kids. So mental abuse, emotional abuse, sexual abuse, all of these things come out. Uh, all of these things open a door, but can come out through deliverance. Now, when we're doing deliverance, yes, we want to do with, uh, we don't want to deal with forgiveness. Forgive those that have abused you. Forgive those that have hurt you but we don't want to take people back. I don't want to go, let's go back to when you were five and remember your abuse. We don't do that. I don't do that. Some of you might do that. And hey, to each his own. Personally, I don't teach that because I see Jesus taking us forward, not taking us back. So hey, that person hurt you. They abused you. Let's forgive them. Let's move on. We're not going backwards into our trauma. We're going forward into our destiny, into our breakthrough, okay? Now again, people do counseling, all of that. That's not what I'm talking about. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about deliverance. When we're casting out demons, 
We don't bring them back to their trauma and have them relive it. Now, I'm not a counselor. I'm not certified, licensed. I don't even know what you have to do now. I haven't done the training online or whatever you guys do to get your counseling stuff. And I'm not diminishing or downgrading counseling. I'm a deliverance. I'm a deliverance guy. I cast out demons. I don't counsel demons. So that's another realm that I'm not, I'm not speaking to. I'm going to be clear. I'm speaking to deliverance. In deliverance, when someone's manifesting a demon, we don't take them backwards. We take them forwards. God wants to heal and deliver. He wants to deliver you from that demon and heal you of that trauma as well. So that abuse growing up is a major open door to demonic spirits. When we're talking about demons, a lot of times demons come in through that abuse. Rejection from the womb. This is a major one. Be very careful when you're pregnant what you're saying. The baby can sense the rejection. It's an open door. Look at this. Luke 1.15 says, John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. So it's possible in the mother's womb to be filled with the Holy Spirit, which makes me think it's also possible to be filled with a demonic spirit in your mother's womb. Now, I've done deliverances on people, and I'm just telling you my personal stories. This is not in scripture. This is Isaiah's personal story alert where demons have said, I've been there since they were in their mother's womb, or I entered into them when they were in their mother's womb. A demon will verbally say that out of the person. That's when they came in. I'll say, how long have you been there? And the demon will say, I've been there since they were in the womb. So when you're rejecting your baby in the womb, even a scientist or a person that studies this will tell you a baby can feel emotion. A baby can feel pain. Hello, somebody. A baby can sense music, your voice in the womb. So if you're speaking things like, I wish I wasn't pregnant. I didn't even want this baby. This baby was an accident. This baby was a mistake. There could be that trauma and that rejection opening you up. A baby seeks love even in the womb. A baby can feel if it's unwanted or doesn't receive that love. And that becomes an open door to demonize your own baby to the spirit of rejection. Again, I, want to, I should have said this in the very start of the stream. A lot of this is going to sound crazy if you don't do deliverance. If you don't do deliverance, you're like, this is nuts. But if you do deliverance, you're like, oh yeah, I've dealt with these demons before. I've seen this. Again, when you're in the realm of warfare and deliverance, this stuff is common. But when you're just a cheerleader or you're just in the stands or you're just a critic, then you're like, this is nuts and crazy, and you make clips and videos, and then you get ad revenue, and basically my content pays your bills. I get it. But when you do deliverance, you'll see that what I'm saying is true, and this stuff does happen, okay? I dealt with a man who had same-sex attractions. He didn't want it. He didn't want to be attracted to men, but he was. And the demon literally said, his parents wanted a girl, and I came, I came over him because they spoke that over him. They kept speaking they wanted him to be a girl. They didn't want a boy. They wanted a girl. And this spirit, the same-sex attraction spirit, said that it came because his parents were speaking they wanted a girl and it gave that demon a legal right. I don't know. Does that sound crazy? Yes. But I'm telling you what I saw and what happened in the deliverance. So the devil wants to come and confuse and torment kids. And this demon literally came because the parents kept saying, we didn't want a boy, we wanted a girl. And he heard that as a child. He heard that even in the womb, they were saying that. Now here he is. He was attracted to men, even though he was a man and he didn't want it, but there it was. Okay. Some common demons that prey on children, confusion, rejection, fear, anger. These are common demons that prey on kids, rebellion, loneliness, depression, and suicide. These are demons we need to war against, fight against. A lot of young kids are taking their life. It's all over the news. The enemy's not playing games. The enemy's not lukewarm. The enemy's taking his gloves off. It's time for the church to get serious. It's time for the church to stop playing games. Family doors, generational curses. I have videos on this. These are curses that open the door to demons. Exodus 34 says that, uh, uh, says that basically to the third or fourth generation, the curse will visit from the third to fourth generation. Deuteronomy 30, 19 says, I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life, therefore your seed shall live. So, blessings and curses you choose am i going to pass down generational curses or generational blessings and i have an hour-long video on curses i have three hours of videos on generational curses just search the channel choose today what you're going to pass down to your kids type in the chat i will pass down generational blessings i'm not passing curses to my kids the curse stops here it ran in my family till it ran into me i'm going to break this curse I'm going to break this. I'm not living my life under the curse, under the power of the enemy. Choose to pass down blessings to your children. Choose 
to, to pass down breakthrough to your kids, okay? Confusion is a big open door due to divorce. This is a major one. I see in deliverance, a lot of people, a lot of people get demons, spirits of confusion during their parents' divorce. The kid thinks it's their fault. They don't understand. That's a huge one, okay? Divorce, abuse as a kid, word curses spoken over by your parents, open door to demons. Many of you right now can reflect when your parents called you stupid, when they called you fat, when they called you too skinny, when they called you a loser, when they said you'll never amount to anything. Proverbs 18.21 says death and life are in the power of the tongue. You can speak curses and you can speak blessings. Proverbs 6.2 says you're snared by, your, by the words of your mouth. The word snare means to bring to destruction or ruin, like a bird caught in a snare. So your words have power. Watch what you speak over your kids. I should probably do a whole stream on this. Watch what you're passing down to your kids. Oh, it's bleeping out. I will pass down because it's uh, in pass as ASS and I have that block. So it's all right. It's bleeping it out there. But watch what you're passing down. So here's what I want to say about family doors. Make the choice to keep the doors closed in your kid's life. Don't expose your kids to abuse. Are you guys hearing me? Don't expose your kids to sinful things. Protect your kids. Don't exploit them. Protect them. Do not expose them to sexual things. Do not expose them to abuse. Do not expose them. Don't listen. Y'all are crazy if you're letting your kids stay the night at their friend from school's house. I'm just saying, y'all are crazy. Wait, you're letting your kids stay the night at their unsafe friend from school's house? Do you know what goes on in that house? Do you know what that house is exposed to? What they're watching? What they're listening to? What's happening? Who's there at night? No, no, no. 0% chance my kids will ever in a zillion years stay the night at an unsaved friend's house or even, even a friend house for that matter. Hey, they want to stay the night. They can come to my house. I know what goes on in my house, but Hey, they ain't going over there. I'm not trying to be rude, but I don't know what goes on up in your house. Okay. I don't know what goes on up in your house. And so I monitor my kids. We know what they're doing until they go to bed. We know we watch, we pay attention. We know what they do when they wake up. We're not allowing, I can't even take the chance of exposing my kids to darkness or abuse or things like that. God gave them to me and I just can't, I just can't. I just can't risk it, no way, it's not worth it. So don't let your kids stay the night at people's houses. Don't let your kids be babysat by some crazy person out there. If you're having a babysitter, you better believe they're spirit-filled Christians that go to my church. And they even then, I don't know, I'm gonna have to put some cameras around the house to watch you. Cause not with my kids, I'm not exposing my kids to demons. And these things open doors to demons, these family doors, okay? Number two, as you guessed it, is trauma. Trauma is a major open door to demonic spirits, a major open door to demons. Trauma definition is a deeply distressing or disturbing experience. A deeply distressing or disturbing experience. Trauma opens you up. I don't know how this works. I don't know why this is, but something about trauma gives demons an open door. I deal with demons over and over again, and I ask them how they got there, and it's through a traumatic experience. Car accidents are an open door. People get the spirit of death, anxiety from traumatic car accidents. How many times have you heard somebody that's afraid in cars, irrationally afraid? It's spiritual. It's demonic. I can't get on the freeway. I'm afraid to turn. I'm afraid to park. Friend, that's not, that's not godly. Break that fear. God is not giving you that spirit of fear. Surgeries, traumatic experiences during surgery. I've shared the story where my wife had a spirit of trauma come over our daughter's bed. She was in the NICU, in the ICU, and it came over her bed and said, I'm going to kill your daughter. My daughter almost died when she was born. It was a miracle. She's made it through and it has zero health complications from that. But long story short, a spirit of trauma came over my wife's bed. So yeah, trauma comes over during near-death experiences, life-threatening illnesses, attempted suicide opens you up to a spirit of trauma or opens you up to any spirit because any spirit can come through these doors. Loss of a loved one, that could be a traumatic experience that opens you up to demonic spirits come into your life, coming into your body. Events like burglaries, those are open doors. When you have a break-in, a traumatic break-in at night, that opens you up to a demonic spirit. That traumatic experience can give you a spirit of fear, a spirit of torment, okay? Um, sexual traumas, R-A-P-E. Did I spell it right? R-A-P-E is an open door, traumatic, devastating experience. And again, I know what you're thinking. How is that fair? that someone did this to me and I got a demon from what they did to me, the devil's a victimizer. Demons are victimizers. This is what they do. They destroy. 
They abuse. They dominate. So these things become open doors to unclean spirits, to demonic spirits. So trauma is a major open door. Another major open door, and I'm trying to go fast here because, again, I actually have a meeting tonight. Um, so, yeah, that's why we did it at five instead of six, but you got watching the replay and all that stuff. Is occult practices. This is a very common major open door. Again, tonight, if you're just jumping in, we're talking about how demons enter humans. How do demons enter into humans? These are open doors. Occult practices. Pledges, oaths, vows, ceremonies, horoscopes, fortune telling, tarot cards, voodoo, spirit guides, sorcery, seances, horror movies. Horror movies are an open door to demons. Necromancy, that's communicating with dead people. Blood oaths or blood vows. Hypnosis. I know you're like, I just went to the fair and did hypnosis and they made me, you know, do something funny, stand on my head. That's demonic. You might have a demon if you did, if you did hypnosis, just so you know, it's demonic. It's new age. Handwriting analysis, automatic writing, astrology, yoga, yoga pastors. Are you hearing me? Those of you like, I just do yoga in my church. Welcome, uh, congratulations. You're opening up your church to demons. We have yoga at the church. You're opening up your congregation to demons. Sadly, you have no problem inviting demons into your congregation, but you're scared to cast them out of your congregation. You know what's bizarre to me? Pastors think, think I'm crazy because I cast demons out of Christians, yet they have yoga studios in their church. Wait, you're telling me the same pastor that has a yoga class in his church is calling me crazy for casting out demons? So it's all good. You, you invite them in. I'll, I'll cast them out. It's all good. It doesn't matter. It, it is what it is. I'm not trying to throw shade at you, but hey, here we go. Psychics, palm reading, Ouija boards, Levitation games, books about the occult and spells, Freemasons, Eastern Star, Rainbow Girls, fraternities and sororities. Yes, 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 yes. Occult, cults, demonic, major open doors. I don't, I don't even have a number of how many people I've cast demons out of that got demons from playing the Ouija board. They got demons from opening it up, trying to talk to the demon. You want to talk to the demon, the demon's going to come live inside of you. It's no game, no joke. I don't care if you just got a reading at the mall. I just got a quick palm reading at the mall. Well, good job. You got Charlie's Steakery, uh, Wetzel's Pretzels, and a demonic spirit all at the same time. Because you thought it was cute and nice. And I know I'm strong tonight, but I don't want to see you demonized and victimized. I want to see you free. So that's why I'm strong. That's why I'm being strong tonight in my preaching. So when you're at the mall, stay away from the psychic booth, the reading, the palms, the tarot cards that they're trying to give you at McDonald's. Common practices people engage in, horoscopes. Friend, you don't need to know whether you're a Cancer or Leo. All you need to know is your son and daughter of the Most High God. We, I don't know why you're identifying with cancer. We cast out cancer. I'm a cancer. I'm a Leo. No, you're, and I hate to say it this way, stupid. That's what you are because you're opening yourself up to demons. It's, it's literally, by definition, stupid to get involved in horoscopes and open yourself up to demons. And I'm not being spicy or edgy. It literally is, by definition, stupid to do horoscopes. Yoga. The word literally means union. It means you unite yourself to the Brahmin, the Hindu concept of God. When they do the namaste, it means I bow to the divine in you. When you do your hand gestures, I won't even do it, but they do the mudra. That literally is a gesture saying you're marked. You're literally marked by the flow of energy from the yoga, from the demons. You can Google what yoga positions are. They are prayer stances to foreign gods, to demonic spirits. You're literally opening yourself up to demonic spirits when you do yoga. Come on, people, wake up. What are we even defending here? Yoga is demonic. I want to be sealed with the Holy Ghost according to 2 Corinthians 121. I don't want to be sealed with some yoga demon, some triple, some triple level 34 dragon that's trying to enter into my body, some double dog, um, some double dog wiener central demon tries to come into me during yoga. We're not doing that. We're not doing those. Astral projection, the law of attraction, demonic, demonic open doors, cursed items, which I have a whole video on. Items you need to remove. Go watch that on my live tab. Items you need to remove from your home. Open you, you're up to demons. The new teaching in the church where you can project to heaven at any time you want. That's demonic. That's not scriptural. The Bible doesn't teach it. Be careful that you don't go into the astral realm like that. Idols. Turning things into idols. Idolatry opens you up to demons. Anything can become an idol. Entertainment, sports, hobbies, kids. All of these things can open you up to demonic spirits. Number four. Ways demons get in. Through soul ties. Toxic relationships and spiritual spouses. Let's go through these really quick. I have videos on all of these on the channel. I'm running out of time here. Soul ties are another way demons get in. This is a connection in your soul with people. Specifically, sometimes they could be good, but usually they're bad. And they become doors and gateways for demons to enter in. There's a such thing as an STD. 
that is a sexually transmitted demon. When you're sleeping around with other people, you're giving yourself away, you're becoming one with them, the Bible says, and whatever demons they have can, not always will, but can transfer over to you. They can transfer over to you, so be very careful. I don't know what happened on YouTube. We had 2,800 on here, it said, and now we just dropped down to 1,800. So whatever's going on on YouTube, maybe you need to refresh. I don't know if it kicked you out. Hopefully you come back in. It is what it is. I just saw that number drop 1,000 here on my screen. Soul ties, toxic relationships, and spiritual spouses. Some signs you might have a soul tie. I have a whole video on breaking soul ties. You visualize the person when you're with someone else. You left a relationship, but you obsess over them and think about them constantly. You're being abused physically, spiritually, verbally, yet you still can't break things off with them. You defend them to your friends and family, even when the friends and family point at harmed you. You take on the traits of the person you have a soul tie with. You constantly dream and fantasize about them still. You feel like you can't move on with your life. This is signs you have an unhealthy soul tie. And these are often uh, brought about through intimacy. Through, you know, you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean by intimacy? When you do that thing, you do that thing with somebody, that's how you get soul ties often, but it could also be from just being around them a lot, an unhealthy relationship. I have a video on how to break that. Or also spiritual spouses. These are demons that are assigned to you. To th they think they're married to you. They're literally demons that think they are married to you. I also have a video with that. And people have these issues where they feel something laying on them at night. I know there are some kids watching, so I'll be careful here. But spiritual spouses try to come, and they open up the door to more demons. You need to break the connection, break the tie. And uh, yeah, I can't even say what I want to say about that because there's some very dark things that people do that bring demonic spirits. Okay, and the entry point for a spiritual spouse. Well, how do I get? How come I got a spiritual spouse? Why is there a demon thinking it's attached to me or sexually abusing me? Fornication, pornography, masturbation, engaging in spiritism, channeling spirits, adultery, doing rituals to invoke demons. All of these things are how you get these spiritual spouses. All right, number five, open door, sinful acts or sinful habits usually recurring. Now, sometimes a single act can be an open door for an unclean spirit, but it's not a guarantee. But just know when you do sinful things, sinful acts, you are opening a door. So the next time you decide to get on that website and watch naked women on the screen, I want you to remember you're opening a door. It doesn't mean a demon's going to come through that door every time. We don't know how this fully works. We all know this in part, but just understand you're opening a door when you sin. When you get angry and rage and do something you shouldn't do, you're opening up a door. Okay, Luke 22, verse 3 says, Then Satan entered Judas. And this was when he went out from the Last Supper um, after making the decision to betray Jesus. Judas opened a door that he could not close. So just know that the demons come in that way. I've had demons tell me, I came in when they went here. I came in when they said this. I came in when they acted this way. I came in when they watched this. And not every demon came in because you did something but often they come in to make you do something. For example, a spirit of suicide obviously doesn't come in because you commit suicide. It comes in to try to get you to commit suicide. All right? are, you, are you guys catching that? So these spirits come in for a purpose and for a reason. Sexual acts are a huge open door to demons. We already talked about that. Masturbation, fornication, pornography. These are open doors. If you do these things, especially if you make these habits... Do not be surprised if you have a demon. I don't know how I have a demon. I'm like, yeah, I know how you have a demon. You literally watch pornography for how many years? You masturbated for how many years? Okay, you opened yourself up. You opened yourself up to a demon. Um, these are all open doors. All right, let's go to the next one here. Number six is the laying on of hands. Are demons able to be transferred by somebody laying their hands on you? Yes. Now, this is not common. This would only be if somebody is heavily involved in the occult, they have some assignment on their life for witchcraft. But if I'm at a church as a preacher and you come up saying, can I lay my hands and pray for you? Probably the answer is going to be no, unless I discern that you're pure or I know your heart or I'm cool with you. But letting random people lay hands on you, I would be very, very careful. Okay. We know that. Think about this. The power of the Holy Spirit is transferred through the laying on of hands. We know that Paul laid hands on people and they received the Holy Spirit. So if people can lay hands and receive the Holy Spirit, is it possible that we can lay hands and impart demonic spirits? Yes. You can release demonic spirits through laying on hands. We know John Ramirez, when I've had him on a bunch of different times, said that they used to always lay hands during their demonic practices and demonic ceremonies. I'm frozen on YouTube. Just refresh it if I am. That's unfortunate. Let me check my phone here. So demonic ceremonies, demonic rituals, they often lay hands. Okay. I'm still going. All right. 
So be careful. Now, I want to read you a verse, and I'm going to explain the context. 1 Timothy 5.22 it says, Don't be hasty on laying on of hands. Now, this verse is not about imparting demons. It's about appointing church leadership. So I don't want to use the verse out of context. It's saying don't lay hands and appoint leadership hastily. But I do believe there's a spiritual principle to be learned here. The spiritual truth is be careful who's laying their hands on you. Now, this, again, is talking about putting leaders and churches and authorities. But just be careful who's laying hands on you. If you don't know them, if you don't know where they're from, I don't know where your hands have been, I'm probably not going to let you lay your hands on me. It's like, hey, can I make you some food? And you're just bare hands making me food, touching my food. Um, I probably don't want you making me food when I don't know you and you have bare, dirty hands. So I probably don't want your dirty spiritual hands on me. I just don't know where they've been. They might be pure, but I don't know where they've been. So just be careful having a bunch of people lay hands on you randomly. Uh, I wouldn't be too hasty about that. Okay, last one. We'll do a part two on this at some point. Last one is entertainment. Notice how I said enter there entertainment. This is the last one I'm going to put tonight. We are at about an hour already, but this is probably the most common. Entertainment is an open door to demonic spirits, especially because you got to remember you're spending six to eight hours a day being entertained. So much access to movies, entertainment, media, music, what you watch matters. What you listen to matters. Look what Matthew 6 22 says. Your eyes are a window for your body. When they're good, you'll have all the light you need. That's the English contemporary version. And the New King James says, the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? So do you see this? We got to be careful that our, our eye, if our eye is full of darkness, how great is that darkness? So protect your eyes because your eye is is your light to your whole body. If your eye is bad, your body's full of darkness. So what I'm watching matters. I don't want to open a door to demonic spirits by what I'm watching. And we're going to pray here in a minute. Okay, music is also an open door. We know Satan. We don't know if Satan was the worship leader of heaven, but we know that in his body is musical instruments. Okay, the, uh, we can at least say that. We don't know to what capacity. Some say he was the worship leader in heaven. The Bible doesn't say that. He might have been, but the Bible doesn't say that. But we know that he had musical instruments, pipes in his body. So, of course, we know the devil's going to use music and music. Now, there are some chants and some demonic music that could give you demons. Okay, but for the most part, the goal of music is to get you to sin, to get you to open the door, to get you to do something bad. So if you listen to music, it'll give you a certain emotion. Sexual music. It'll arouse you sexually. Music about drugs, about drinking, about partying. These things could arouse you and get you to do sinful things. So I see a lot of Christian leaders like, it's fine to listen to worldly music. Um, for me personally, I don't see any gray areas. I don't think it's right for any Christian to listen to worldly music. I, this is what I see. Now, again, I could be wrong. I'm not saying I know it all. I'm not right on everything. Just personally, let me know if I'm wrong. When I read the Bible, I see the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. That's just what I see. I don't see the kingdom of gray. It's like the worldly music's in the kingdom of gray. I don't see that. I see light and darkness. And what I know about these celebrities and these artists and how demonic they are, um, probably not something I want to be involved in. This is why 10,000 young people go to a rave and they dance to the same beat for six hours and they call it trance music. So, I mean, there's power there. There's power in music. And I'm sorry if you don't think there's power. You're sadly mistaken. There is power in music. Why do you think the devil's goal is to get these songs about demons, the devil, all of these things trending? They want to, he wants to open you up. Those are the seven things, okay? So to recap, number one is family doors. Number two is trauma. Number three is occult practices. Number four is soul ties, toxic relationships, and spiritual spouses. Number five is sinful acts or habits. Number six is the laying on of hands. And number seven is entertainment. And now we are going to pray, and we're doing good here. I told you guys I have a meeting, so I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to hang out for like 10 minutes, give you guys a chance to partner with us, give you an, an important announcement for this week, and some upcoming things we have going and then we will we will call it a stream tonight thank you for being here early we peaked at about 2800 which is amazing because most people are barely jumping on right now and we're ending the stream because we started at five i'm sorry you're gonna have to watch the replay this week tomorrow we have bill Wees on the podcast gonna be amazing father i pray right now in the name of jesus god that every door would close i pray god that we would slam the door on the devil tonight god lord if there's any doors in my life i pray right now they'd be shut 
If there's any open doors in my life, God, I pray right now that they, I would slam them shut tonight in Jesus' name. Satan, you have no power. You have no authority over me. I shut every open door. Trauma. I will not allow my kids to go through the trauma I went through. Come on, say that, chat. Decide tonight that you're going to raise your kids in God. I will not allow my kids to go through trauma. I will not allow them to go through pain. I will keep them protected and pure because God has trusted me with them. No more sleepovers at their friend's house. No more messing around. I'm telling you right now, you need to shelter your kids. You need to shelter. Well, it's bad to shelter them. Really? Because shelter means protection during storms. We're in a storm right now in the world. We're in a sexual storm, a digital storm, a media storm. I'm going to protect my kids from that storm. You can do whatever you want. Let your kids go out in the storm of social media. I'm not. My kids won't be in the storm of social media. They will be in the, in the word of God, in the presence of God, walking right before the Lord. Lord, I pray, God, help us to shut the doors. God, just wash us tonight, Lord. I pray, God, you'd bring healing over those that are dealing with trauma. Trauma and pain, God, I pray you would heal right now. Anybody dealing with trauma, I pray, God, deliver and heal them tonight in Jesus' name. Deliver and heal them tonight in Jesus' name, God. Everybody going through trauma and pain. God, I pray for these sinful acts and habits. I pray, God, people would repent tonight. That we'd turn away from our sin and our compromise. We would repent, God, from it. We, you'd wash us. You'd cleanse us. You'd purify us. In Jesus' mighty name, God, wash us. Cleanse us. Help us to break free of these sinful habits right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I pray, God, every door would be closed. We'd get rid of the movies. We'd get rid of the music. We'd get rid of the things of this culture. God, raise up warriors tonight. Raise up soldiers tonight, God. Raise up the army tonight in Jesus' name. Army of God, raise up. Warriors of God, raise up. Light of Christ, I pray, God, illuminate tonight in Jesus' name. Touch your people, God. Slam the door shut tonight, chat. Slam the door. I'm slamming the door tonight in Jesus' name. I'm sober now. I'm watchful now. I'm aware now. I'm not, I'm not a baby. I know where the devil's moving and where he's trying to get in. And I'm going to keep these doors closed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, I'm sorry tonight for being in a hurry. Um, I rarely have other things. But I do have a meeting tonight in about uh, you know 20 minutes here. i got to leave my house. So I'm going to give you guys a chance to give. I do have a cash app now. All of our content is free. So how do we survive? By your guys' help. The way we're able to post two shorts every day, a video every day, live streaming, doing all this editing, flyers, thumbnails, the deliverance map. We pay people to do some of these things. The way we're able to do it is by your guys' support. Without the support, we can't do it. And I don't, I don't ever want to charge for e-courses. I can make these e-courses, right? I can make this an e-course, but I don't want to charge for e-courses. I want to keep doing it free, reach as many people as possible, and thank you for those of you supporting, enable us to do that. Now, very important, this Thursday, 1.30 p.m. So we'll be live this Thursday at noon. At 1.30 p.m., we will go into our partner's prayer call. How do I get the meeting ID for that, Isaiah? You got emailed today. If you're a monthly partner, we emailed you. Okay, check your spam, check your email. If you're a YouTube member, check the community tab. Save that meeting ID. That meeting ID will stay the same forever. Okay, so save the meeting ID on the YouTube community page if you're a YouTube member. If you're a monthly partner on the website, then you should have it in your email. If you don't have it in your email, here's what you need to do. Go to Instagram or my Facebook and comment there saying I didn't get the link. I will personally message you through Instagram or Facebook. Do you guys got that? Okay. The mods can help direct you there. If you didn't get the link, make sure that you get it. My cash app is Isaiah Luke Saldivar. It's right here on screen, sister. And it's in the comments. Isaiah Luke Saldivar. Now you might say, Isaiah, I want to be a part of these uh, weekly prayer meetings. The, all you got to do is partner with us, okay? I can't open it to everybody because Zoom will crash. I've already tried doing that, and we had a 1,000 people instantly and crashed. So uh, even if you give a dollar, it doesn't matter. It could be a dollar a month on the website. It doesn't matter. You'll get the link. I will email you that link tonight personally uh, right when you sign up. So you can sign up on IsaiahSaldivar.com slash partner. You get 70 sermons you can't find on YouTube. 70 old school OG sermons. You won't find those on YouTube, 20% off the merch store, and then you get the weekly prayer meetings with partners. We used to do once a month partner calls, but we decided to do weekly prayer meetings. We're going to get to know each other. We're going to pray for each other and do all that good stuff. Okay? All right. I'm going to a prayer meeting. I'm going to a prayer meeting tonight. So, okay. Tomorrow we have Bill Weez on at six o'clock. I want all of you to be back here. And as you guys give, thank you for giving. I won't read the giving tonight, but I want you guys to give. If you are blessed tonight, so... Okay, that's it. Simple. You don't go to Denny's and then dine and dash. 
If you came here and you got a good meal, you got a good teaching, so into it. Uh, these teachings are an hour. They take me probably like four to six hours to prepare these. So I, I put work into these. I put work into these, okay? If you can't afford it, don't feel bad and don't give. But I'm just letting you know this is what keeps us going. These streams literally keep us going, and we only do these Mondays once a week. So it keeps us going. Um, really quick. Okay, so we're live Thursday at noon. Thursday at 1.30, Partners Prayer Call. This Sunday, we'll be in San Bernardino. That's January 28th at the Way World Outreach in Southern California. If you're in Southern California, this Sunday, 9 and 11, come early, please. I want to see you there. You got to come early if you want to get in. It's a big building, but you got to come early. 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. in San Bernardino, the Way World Outreach. IsaiahSalivar.com slash schedule to find that info. February 24th, Antioch, California. Info's on my website. March 3rd, Lifesong Church. That's my home church in Stockton. Life Song Church. Okay? I'll put that on the website. Is that on the website yet? Excuse me. My nose is itching. I'll put that on the website soon. Man, I don't know how it's so hot in here. What is going on? It's supposed to be storming here. It's, I'm so hot. All right. July 19th through the 21st, I'll be in Washington at Revival in the Desert. Go to revivalinthedesert.com for more info. That's all I got there. So there's the Cash App. There's the Venmo. There's the Zelle. I have everything now. I have my website, which is the best place to give. Then Venmo, then Zelle, then Cash App, then PayPal. All of the links I got, y'all. All the links I got, okay? Tomorrow's going to be Bill Weeze. We're talking about hell. We're going to answer the most controversial questions on hell. Bring your unsafe friends and family to that stream tomorrow, okay? Thank you, guys. Again, if you want to be a part of the weekly prayer meetings, partner with us on our website or on YouTube members, and the link will be there. What a great night, guys. I'm going to get off in about five minutes. We'll be live again tomorrow. We'll be live again Thursday. I'm grinding hard this year with three streams a week. Uploads, two short videos a day. If you guys didn't see my short today of my daughter dancing, it was hilarious. It was so cute. Let me see if I can give you guys a sneak peek here. Go watch it on my Instagram or YouTube. Did anybody see it? What'd you guys think? I thought it was so funny. Let me see if I can show you guys this. Dude, I love this video. This is like one of my favorite videos of all time. Hold on. Watch this. Nova getting down, dancing. Watch. She is so cute dancing. Watch. She's got the moves, y'all. Go watch the video. It's hilarious. I've watched this video like 20 times a day. Her little back and forth shuffle is so funny. People were saying that YouTube crashed tonight. Hmm. Yeah, I was getting texts saying it wasn't playing on YouTube. But we did have 2,800 and then we dropped down to 1,800 instantly. So something happened. I don't know what. Uh... The link is, uh, the video is on my Facebook, my YouTube, and my Instagram. Just go to my shorts. Yeah, it's so funny watching her dance. She's so cute. Okay. So, yeah, what was it saying? I just text, text you back. Something happened on YouTube. Lame. Lame. Right when we get some momentum. We had some momentum and then... Crash and burn. YouTube said, nope. What's the drink tonight? Hint, watermelon. I'm all out of peach. The peach only comes in the variety pack, so I drink them right away. But yeah, watermelon's good. All right, guys, five minutes. Let's talk. Five minutes will be live tomorrow. I'm sorry to be in a rush, but I have a, a prayer meeting I'm going to go to tonight. Nothing happened? Okay, I guess it was for some people only. A lot of you said nothing happened. JD Gaming, thanks for being here, brother. Hopefully, you can be here the next stream. It kept kicking me out, and it rarely happens. That's so lame. YouTube, why? Why do you have so much money? You're literally a trillion-dollar company, and you can't just give me one clear stream? Come on now. Learning a lot since watching you. Thank you. Again, if you guys partner monthly tonight, you will get the link to Thursday, just so you know. Because those of you still asking how to get into Thursday, yes. 
Yeah, my internet's clean. I could see my signal. It's been fine the whole time. It's a YouTube issue. Facebook was fine, though. All right. I love you guys. Thank you for giving and partnering. I can't say it enough. We'll be live tomorrow. We're going to keep grinding, putting in the work, putting in the effort. It's going to be the greatest year ever. It's Listen, the algorithms are up and down. The views go up. They go down. The platform censor me, demonetize me. I've been demonetized on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. The only place I have monetization is YouTube. It is what it is. We're going to keep preaching. We're going to keep doing it. The religious people cry about us. The platforms get mad at us. Oh, well. We've got to keep boldly declaring the word of God. We're just keep, we're just keep moving. We just got to keep moving. We can't we can't sit around and cry about it. All right, no ending screen tonight. Uh, I guess I'll put it on for a second. But I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. I'll see you tomorrow night at six o'clock. Again, sorry for this being a short one. I usually go two hours, but hey, at least you got the most important part, and that was the Bible teaching. See you guys. Love you. Bye. Oh, hey. Didn't see you. I was just chilling down there listening. If this, if you've enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit the like button. Super Love easy, you guys. super free. Helps a lot. All right, so right now, stop what you're doing. Hit like. Okay, I'm going back down here. Bye. Love you guys. Have a good night. All right, I got you. Here. There you go. Goodbye. Love you guys.